All right. So thanks so much for joining me here today. Um, I'm just going to start things off with a really simple question we ask everybody right out of the gate. Uh, who is Worst Pony and why? Oh, um, like overall or main six? Uh, let's go overall. I don't want to get people too upset. Oh, overall. That's that's harder because I don't really think about it too much for like every character. Um, hmm. But you think about it all the time with the main six, I'm sure. I, I think about it all the time with the main six, yeah. And <laughs> and that's Rambo Dash, is no question. Um mm. <laughs> good. Um, but for overall, I I don't know, twist, I guess. Like um I, I can't think of anybody Oh no, wait. Fluttershy's brother is pretty bad. Zephyr. No, he's awful. Yeah, yeah. yeah I agree, that's my least. Yeah, favorite. yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Rainbow Dash? Oh, no. Oh, no. We just lost 50 <laughs> viewers, I'm sure. Just from that, right out of the gate. So, uh... Yeah, she, she's just my least favorite of the main six. Okay. Uh, you I'll have say a that. reason why you, you aren't digging Rainbow Dash? Uh, I don't know. I mean, she, she's arrogant a lot of the time. So, yeah. <laughs> just not digging the arrogance. So, I'm sure in that case, you probably, yeah. you like Pip a little bit more than... Or not Pip... You know, Zip. About. Zip. Yeah, Zip. I do like I do like Zip. Zip's just the better Rainbow Dash. Well, she tries to be. I think that that might have yeah. been the intention. Um. So, uh, as as a contrast to that, <clears throat> my apologies. Do you have a a favorite of the main six or of the uh, show in general? Uh, yeah. I am Twilight. Twilight's my favorite. Um. Uh, it's it used to be Fluttershy when I first started watching. Uh, then it uh shifted towards twilight and then like i started liking pinky a lot more so like pinky and twilight kind of fought for my top position for a while uh but then eventually it just uh became twilight i, I have like a couple of twilight things over there it's good twilight is a uh, is best book course um that's it's a good answer uh did you uh and i'm not sure if these feelings were expressed quite a bit in the past but uh were you a big fan of when she became a uh, princess twilight um yeah i remember um like how big that was and now like looking back it doesn't seem like a big deal um but yeah i uh i didn't really mind um when that happened when he when she got wings uh so yeah it just seems like so minuscule compared to like the rest of the show because like there's so much more sure one of the main characters becoming a god. It's a side note. It's a footnote to the rest of the yeah, story, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> um, which, is, which, is, which is fair. I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens. I mean, I'm, at the end of the show, they, they murder a child. So, I mean, yeah. as far as... Yeah, it's, there's levels to this. Uh, Twilight's, I, I would say, probably one of the more popular opinions. I mean, not, not as popular mm. as Rainbow Dash, but uh, we'll see. We'll yeah. see in the comments how people feel about that, I'm sure. Um, we'll just remove any of those if they come through. We're we're gonna be on a, on a Twilight Sparkle agenda for this podcast. Uh, so you have been doing a lot of work over the past couple of years. You're still doing pony stuff, which is fantastic to see. Like a lot of the people we've been mm -hmm. talking with, um, you're still in love with with pony, which is is awesome because it's a great community, and uh, you know we're super excited to see it continue. Um, are there any particular projects that you're working on today that are are pony related that uh, people might be interested to hear about? There is a big project I want to do about Friendship is Magic, and I still want to do, like, videos on G5 as, as it comes out, um, like, Make Your Mark um, coming out next month. I'm not sure when this interview is going to be really released or anything, but I'll, I'll, I'll definitely do a video on, on the special and the series when it comes out. Um, but yeah, like, the past, like, um, year, I did a few videos, uh, like, leading up to the to G5 releasing, and then I did a couple of videos after. Um, but, um... Yeah, I, I have been struggling a lot with, with videos the past couple of years, uh, especially like the past few months, because uh, I've been going through a lot of like different emotional things the past past few months. But I, I still uh, do like making videos. It's it's just been a struggle right now. Um, but there is like a big video I want to do about Frenchman's Magic eventually. Um, I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to give it away. Um, but uh, it, it will be a long one. Okay. A follow up to Saber's uh, Brony documentary. I gotcha. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, no, <laughs> no, oh, no, not qu not good. quite like that. Okay, 
Uh, we could also take like two hours on why Tell Your Tale is the greatest uh, pony show to be released to date. Yeah, I mean, no, it's on Pony Life. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that show is chaotic. Uh, they they need to calm down a little bit. Uh, I had seen. I, have you watched? I, I haven't pony finished. Life? Yeah, I, I watched the first season. Uh, I haven't finished season two. I need I need to do that eventually. Because uh, okay. they're they're like five minute episodes, so it might as well. Um, yeah. I did. Um end up watching all of the Questor Girl stuff. Um, I even, like, it's so confusing to, like, see, like, which Equestria Girl stuff is what. Um, so I made, like, a, an entire spreadsheet of the different Equestria Girls um, uh, mm -hmm. episodes and what, like, what they belong to, what when they released, and what they released uh, as, I guess. Because um, there are so many different things of Equestria Girls. Um, that's one thing I, I am kind of disappointed that after G4 ended uh, is that uh, Equestria Girls didn't really have like its its own finale. Yeah. It just kind of ended. And I mean, from what I understand, it's a lot more popular than I remember being back in the day. There used to be a lot of people. Oh, who, yeah. Who didn't like people were very upset. I <laughs> uh, think everybody's come to accept that uh, accept it for what it is. And especially as they went on, they 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 definitely got a lot more. They started uh, finding their own their own place. Um, yeah, yeah. Here's here's the spreadsheet I actually um made of this because like I I was looking for like all the different shorts and uh, other like series that was uh that that was part of Equestria Girls because okay. I was like wait wait how much Equestria Girls stuff is there? So and this is like all the the stuff that's um like in the Equestria Girls styles. Because th there's a couple of shorts that are like weird 3D ones that are based on the toys, which but I don't count those. Sure. Um, I just count the ones that are from like DHX. Yeah. So. So I don't know if you agree, but my least favorite like pony content thing is actually from Equestria Girls. It's the uh, the blooper reels they do uh, at the end of I think at least one of them, if not a couple of them, just the forced fake oh. blooper reel thing. I don't know if you've seen those. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, those are. I don't like the fake or the fake blooper reels, especially when we have the real, genuine ones that were leaked, and those things are just oh yeah, yeah. Those things really set the bar uh, really high up there. Uh, so yeah, no, Equestria Girls is great. Have you seen much of the uh, much of the new pony content, Gen Five, that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I've been keeping up with it because um, I've I, I've watched the movie multiple times. I watched it like four times in the same day. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I, I, when I first watched it, I was like, this, this is good. Um, and I was like, I think that Thunk the songs are good, but, it, but it's, it's fine. And then I took a shower and then I just kept thinking about it. And then I watched it again with my friends. I was like, no, I really like this. And then I watched it again with my dad. And then I watched it again with no, another uh, group of friends. So yeah, I, I really like the movie. Um, and for Tell Your Tale, I've been keeping up with that. Uh, I do think they're too short. Uh, it's it has the same problem that like Pony Life has. The Pony Life is like way more hyper than that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for Tell Your Tale, it's like these stories could be eleven minutes at least, not just five minutes for like the stories they're trying to do because they they feel like they end abruptly. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm much more looking forward to Make Your Mark when that comes out. Right around the corner, right over the horizon. Uh, and the uh movie you said you'd watch that quite a few times in one day. Um. Is there anything in particular from that movie that that stood out to you as uh as compelling? Like, what was it that that got you to keep thinking about it? Um, I think I think a lot of it uh just had to deal with like how uh Sunny was going about like uh, her her problems. Um, because I did another video after I did a review of the movie of how like uh like MLP taught me how to uh be empathetic again. Um, cause I, I had been like having struggling like the past couple of years, especially like during COVID stuff where I, I was just like angry at the world. Um, so with, uh, with that, I, I think that that kind of resonated with me. And also the, um, just the songs in general are really, really good. Um, cause that was one thing that I was worried about with, with G5. Um, I, I'm, I'm still kind of worried about it with like, uh, up and cup King up upcoming, uh, make your mark. Cause they're have have different people on it mm -hmm. um but with um with the movie uh the first thing i was worried about were the designs because i was like what are they gonna look like in 3d um this the second thing was the movement and then we saw that 
the the third thing was um i i guess the uh the, the characters in general and how they acted mm -hmm. uh the other thing was the songs and like if they would even hold a candle to what daniel ingram did um but i thankfully i do really like all the songs i, I think they're really great they are fit right in is a banger yeah yeah that's my favorite from the from the movie I think it's a fan favorite for sure. Um, the show itself, I mean, is is awesome. I think everybody in the fandom loves it. Uh, and more than anything is it leaves us, the type of story that it is, it leaves us with a lot of questions. It leaves us really wanting to, to know what had happened and, and what's going to happen moving forward. Um, so we have a couple of months to wait for that still, and I hope that they deliver, mm -hmm. uh, they deliver a good product. Um, we have in Izzy, in Make Your Mark, she mentions what a unicorn how a unicorn does this and how a unicorn does that. I'm not sure if you remember that part of the song. Uh, yeah, yeah. But immediately they go into Bridalwood where they proceed to not do any of those things. Uh, so I think there's been a lot of talk about there being other unicorn cities. And of course there's this whole world. Uh, but it's it's I think it's going to be pretty exciting when we finally see it. Yeah. Uh, do you have any... Have you been messing around with any head cannons or anything? Fan theories about, about um... the uh, universe so far? Uh, not not really at the moment. I'm just kind of like along for the ride. I'm not really like theorizing or anything. Okay. Well, uh, we have a couple of months to wait, and when it's here, I'm sure those questions will begin to get answered. Mm -hmm. I know we still have a, a couple of wonderful people working on it, and it's it's going to be great, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. So we have been talking a lot about cons on these uh on these interviews because most of the people we're, we're talking to, uh, you know, and a lot of the fandom, we, we connect through those conventions uh, and you do quite a bit of those yourself. Uh, if I can start yeah. just by asking you a little bit more so about the, uh, the multimedia cons you've been working on, like, uh, like MomoCon, for example, uh, mm -hmm. how that, what type of con that is and how you guys are, are being a part of that as, uh, as people coming from the pony fandom, uh, making new, new, new sorts of content. Yeah. So, um, uh, MomoCon was a convention that, uh, me and my friends went to, um, first as just attendees back in 2018, because, uh, our friend, uh, Pan Pizzi, uh, for, for those listening, um, uh, he was going there with, with his friends and doing panels, um, and we had a lot of fun there, uh, so we applied to be guests the next year, uh, in 2019, um, and it was really fun, um, uh, going to that, con that convention. It was a lot bigger than any other convention we had been to before. Um, because, like, BronyCon was the biggest con convention as far as ponies go. Um, but, uh, MobileCon's, like, four times the size of that. Uh, four or five times the size of that. Um, so, it was, it was a lot of fun seeing, like, uh, all, all these different, uh, panels and, and cosplays and everything of, like, uh, anime, games, cartoons. Um, and it seems like MobileCon, especially, is becoming sort of a hub for the, uh, the cartoon community. Uh, yep. which like me and Saber are sort of sort of a part of. We're we're kind of standoffish a, l a little bit. Um, where we kind of like do our own thing because there's there's this, like there's these, this other group of friends and then we have our group of friends who's like, oh yeah, we know each other from Pony. So <laughs> yeah. Um. But um, yeah, it's it's been fun. Um, we were originally going to be going to another uh, convention, but you know, COVID happened. Uh, which was uh, I think it was like Grand Rapids um uh con in like michigan okay. um we were originally going to go to that but then things fell through um but uh we we might try to do a, doing some other conventions but we're we're always going to be going to to to, to pony cons um because that that's just like where a lot of uh love our friends are and it's just fun to fun to do um it, all, it also uh as far as like going to the multi uh genre conventions it's it's fun to see like uh uh people's reaction to um when when we talk about pony stuff um uh but like when we go to pony conventions it's like oh we feel feel like we're kind of home there so well we'll we'll always uh, go to that heck yeah it, the other day you had actually mentioned that um if you, if you don't mind maybe recapping that that story you had told me of uh when everybody went down oh, the yeah. line and yeah so um there was this panel we did at um at momocon in 2019 where we were presenting uh clips for cartoon pilots um which was, was kind of weird that uh, we were asked to do that because I, I, I thought, like, the people who made the cartoons would have done that. Um, but we were asked to represent a, um, a clip of uh, Long Gone Gulch, which was a, a pilot that came out uh, on YouTube, like, recently, I believe. 
Um, and um, there's a, a Q and A section where uh, people from the audience would ask questions, and um, uh, we were asked uh, the question of um, what what cartoon or series like got you into making videos uh, about cartoons. Um, and then when when I heard that question, I, I leaned over to to Saber uh, at the time, and um, uh, told him we we should both say Milo Pony at the same time. Um, and it went down the line, and people were saying like Gravity Falls, Steam Universe, um, mm -hmm. uh, regular show, and uh, a bunch of other things. When it got to me and um, me and Saber, we both said Milo Pony, and like the the crowd cheered. Like there were cheers before of like some of the other cartoons that were said, but like uh, the Milo Pony one was like a big cheer, and we were very surprised by that. Yeah, that's wonderful. So th it, there were there were there were a lot of like bronies in the audience. It was quite a reaction, actually. I mean, yeah, you can even you can hardly even hear the other cheers in the video. Yeah. Um, and when you have went to these cons, do you feel like there's, I mean, a lot of that crossover of, of people who are who are familiar with pony content uh, there? Yeah. Just from your interactions I, with people. Yeah, I I think so. Um, especially at, at something like Mobocon, where it's it's um it's a lot of things. Um, it's, it's not just, like, an anime convention, it's not just, like, a gaming convention, it's, like, everything. Um, where I think is, if we did something like that at, like, a, uh, an anime convention, it, it, we probably wouldn't get the same kind of reaction. Um, because, uh, uh, like I said, the Momocon's sort of becoming a hub for the cartoon community, and, and there's, like, a lot of people who have, uh, mm. been into, like, cartoons and stuff that were, were in the My Little Pony as well. Yeah. And what is the next Momocon? Uh, that is coming up uh, Memorial Day weekend, so very soon. Very soon, right around the corner. Yeah, it's it's coming out the same weekend as the Make Your Mark special comes out. So, heck yeah, okay. and and the game <laughs> that's coming out. Yeah, that game's looking pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have, of course, uh, a lot of conventions that you go to, as we had said. So, I, I've learned through you and through YouTube comments that Saber has a little bit of a thing with his audience where he's not quite uh, telling everybody, uh, or coming out as a furry, rather. He's a little on the fence about that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think I think it would be a great opportunity if you guys went to something like Anthrocon. I'm not sure how you feel about furry conventions, but... Yeah, um, so I know Saber has talked about, like, he wants to try to go to a furry convention at, at some point. Hmm. Um, though I'm... I'm not sure if that would give a, any anything away, because um, like I've I, I've told Saber is like you 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 can't like give them an answer, N never give them an answer. Of course, <laughs> he's he's just gonna keep along with a bit. Um, but uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, because it, it seems like furry conventions are a bit very different from like pony conventions, uh, and also like stuff like Momocon. Um, and from what my, my friend Matt, um, my friend Matt, uh, who is a DB pony, um, we've known each other for a long time, uh, even before the pony stuff. Um, and, uh, because we actually used to be in the furry community together, um, but then I, I kind of fell out of it and then I got into ponies. Um, but with, uh, because he, he's told me about going to, I, I think he went to Anthrocon. It was either Anthrocon or another big one. Okay. Um, uh he did not like it <laughs> and like that that's somebody who was a furry um but uh yeah it's i don't know um it it's that was a long time ago though when he went um i'm not sure if conventions have changed a bit now as far as furry conventions go i do like seeing like some of the fursuits that are at uh pony conventions um like at harmony con there's some uh, really interesting ones uh that, that i saw um but yeah, um, I'm not sure if Saber would ever go to go to one or not. Uh, well, we'll we'll see in the future, I guess. Okay. Well, if he does, let us know. We can make sure we can we can pay for him, deck him out in a full fursuit, suit. That when he goes, he can go in style. Uh, so as a, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, uh, convention connoisseur, probably with how many you've been to at this point, I have to ask your expert opinion. What do we need to do to bring back uh, Las Pegasus Unicon? Oh god. <laughs> um wasn't there another Vegas convention that happened like recently or what did that not happen? Was, was it like there? High Roller Con? Yeah, oh. it was like High Roller Con or whatever I think oh. it was called. Vaguely familiar. Did it happen? Was it canceled? I don't remember. No, because I think bad. it was before the pandemic. Okay. 
So, no, I, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't think it was under the the same leadership as Las Pegasus. Yeah, I'm no, it wasn't. Sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's I. Didn't they destroy the hotel that it was at? Like literally, it's gone. I've heard a lot of stories. <laughs> I actually was. I I I, I want to say unlucky that I wasn't there. Um, just because I feel like it's such a great part of history, pony history at this point. But uh, I, I've heard a lot of great things about it. I think, it, if anything, it really set itself as like a model that other conventions should aspire to. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was just curious if you, if you had any thoughts on why people aren't bringing that back. Because I mean, lightning in a bottle, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, is there? I, I know you guys do a lot of different events. You do a lot of different things when you go to conventions. Is there anything in particular that you kind of look forward to, like your highlight thing? Like when I go to a con, this is what I'm gonna look forward to doing the most when I get there. Um, I do really like um hosting who's line mm -hmm. uh when i get to do that um because like i i know everything that they're going to do um beforehand because mm -hmm. uh usually um sarah uh races races wife will um work with hirasashi one of my one of my friends and uh and panama matt another one of their friends um with um with just making up the games and everything mm -hmm. um and uh some sometimes i'll I'll help out as well um but uh the who's line the those panels are always different um like sometimes we'll have like some like similar games and everything, but it always comes out different um so th that's that's something i I always look forward to because usually with yeah. like um the Baroni's rag panels we do uh the the how to YouTube panels some of the podcast panels we we usually get a lot like a lot of the same like questions and you kind of you that's kind of why I started stopped going to like the voice actor panels because people always like ask the same questions. Like if you've gone to a few, you've kind of heard the the, the same thing. Um, but with whose line is like always different. Um, so uh, that's that's what I, I looked forward to a lot. The power of improv always got to be different. Mm -hmm. So is I mean you you have of course the whose line panels that are are awesome for you. Um, are there any upcoming conventions this year in particular you look forward to going to? Um, I, I do want to go to, um, Ciderfest. That one's always very fun. Um, yeah. in Woody City. Um, uh, which I'm, I, by, by the time this interview comes, comes out, I'm, I'm probably going to be announced for that. So, cause it, it's like in the first week of, weekend of June. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, well, when he, when he's sitting in Ciderfest, I I enjoy those conventions. Um, and uh, recently I went to HarmonyCon and that was that was fun. Yeah, HarmonyCon was great. Uh, did you do any of the online cons when they were a thing over over the course of the pandemic? I did do a couple um a couple of panels for um PonyFest online. Okay. Um, or at least I was like uh, a guest on panels. Like we did like a Jackbox thing. Um, and then um. It's funny because like uh, in in twenty twenty, uh, Momocon actually did their own like online thing as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm kind of proud of like the 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 Brony community for the online con stuff because like they kind of like started it, um, with the the Pony Fest online. I'm I am not aware of any other convention that was or like community that was doing something like that. Um, and that's the first one I had heard of. Uh. And then I started seeing other conventions do it. Like, like I said, MomoCon did their own. Yeah, then uh, there were a lot of conventions by the end that were doing it. And I mean, w what a cool platform. I mean, if it gets people mm -hmm. into doing actual conventions too, then the more the merrier. Yeah. Um. So, my apologies here. Just hit a blank in my mind. It's good. It's really good. Keep the flow going and all that, you know? Very nice. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Probably a good time for a water break. Yeah. It's going to have technical difficulties there on the screen. Wait, was it something about conventions that you were going to say? It was. Then I started thinking about two other things at the same time. Now I can't remember any of them. This has happened a couple times. Uh... Conventions. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. 
Oh goodness. Uh, there was uh, there was something. My apologies here. I don't know why. I just completely lost everything in my head. Thoughts at empty baby, I think, is the term the kids use these days. It's good stuff. Okay. Um, let me double check my notes to make sure I'm not getting too off track here. All right. Uh, are there any types of conventions that you uh, haven't done before? Um, like maybe anime conventions specifically that you'd like to do content at? Um, anime conventions are kind of strange in that they um, sometimes they're only anime or like only like anime and like little a little bit of gaming. So it's 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 hard to like <laughs> do stuff at them. Um, because um, with a the first convention I actually went to, uh, right before going to BronyCon 2012, was uh, An Amazement, which is a local convention uh, okay. in my state. Um, and um, <laughs> from what from what I hear, it's only gotten kind of worse as far as like how like how limited it is as far as An Amazement goes. Um, because uh, they had a thing where you could buy like a day ticket or whatever. Um, and that's that's what I did. But they kind of redone it recently where it was like, oh no, you have to pay for the whole weekend. Uh like mm -hmm. if you want to go. And that kind of like screws screws the people the local people people here. Sure. It was like, well, I just want to go for a day. Um I'm not sure if they changed it since then. Um uh especially since the, the pandemic. I, I haven't checked. Um But there's there was also another convention that happened here back in that I went to back in twenty seventeen called a playthrough, which is a gaming convention. Um and I, I I'd, li I'd like to go uh, back there again at, at some point. Um, but another convention I want to go to since um, uh, me, Saber, and Tom, uh, Tommy Oliver, mm -hmm. are doing some uh, gaming content with the Saber Spark sixty four channel. Um, I do want to go to Too Many Games, um, which is a, um, a convention in um, in Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, I believe. Um, and there, there's a lot of like dick gaming, uh, YouTube personalities that go there. So I, I'd like to to go to that convention at some point, and and probably do a panel or something. Uh, if we get more of the uh, Saber Sparks uh, sixty four channel running more. Yeah, that sounds like fun. I mean, gaming conventions are are a blast. You guys could go to BlizzCon, mm -hmm. get a no life wow, uh, World of Warcraft for a couple months. That's what Seth and I have been doing for the past couple days. Uh, so I I did remember a, a, uh, my other question. I'm not sure if you guys are, oh. are aware, maybe you're a little bit more in tune with this sort of thing, but um, we're only just starting to realize how absolutely massive and engaged to date uh, a lot of the international My Little Pony communities are um, just spread yeah. across the world. There's so many of them that are engaging and they kind of exist in a different uh, realm of, of, of content. Uh, I'm sorry, of content um, in the types of things that they watch and engage with and just the communities that they have and communicate on. Uh, have you done a lot of international cons or had any any involvement in any of those other communities? Or are you very familiar with them at all? Um, I'm not too familiar with um, international cons. I haven't I haven't been to, been to any. Um, I haven't been out of the country yet. Um, so uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't been to any. I know that um, like Race has been to a few because he mm -hmm. went to uh, Galacon and and uh, 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 Alicon in um, in Australia, Galacon in, in Germany. Right. Um, but, um, I, I, I would like to go to one at some point, uh, or travel a little bit. Um, but, uh, I, I'm not really too familiar as far as like, um, where some of the, uh, the other international communities are as far as content goes. Cause I remember like race telling me about how like, uh, in Germany, they were like a season or two behind or something, um, with, a uh, friends of his magic when that was uh, still airing. Um, I, th I don't know if like other countries are like still airing it as far as like dubs or whatever. Um, but I know that for the, the G5 stuff, they've been doing a lot of things where, uh, a lot of it's worldwide release, um, which that's what happened with Netflix where it's like, oh yeah, it's just releasing everywhere. And it's, uh, they're doing that a lot with, um, tell your tale and make your mark too. Cause tell your tale is like in a ton of different languages. Um, and it seems like a lot of the episodes are kind of like, uh, sometimes they're accidentally uploaded to different languages, uh, before others. Um, yeah. 
so i'm not sure if just that's just like a bad uh, like scheduling uh issue that they've they've had um but yeah um i i would like to go to a uh an international con at, at some point yeah they're a ton of fun and as i said it's it's crazy to see how many people uh outside of the the u.s community are um engaging with pony content uh, I think mm -hmm. I had spoken with the uh, Double W Brothers. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. Uh, they do pony animations. Uh, mm -hmm. And they had said the demographics for their content uh, puts uh, the U.S. at anywhere from 40%, 50%. Um, and they get they get millions and tens of millions of views on their content. So uh, it, it's just awesome to see that there's there's so many different people engaging uh, with that. And it's it's also awesome to see that there's still so much uh, the, so much pony happening today. Um, if you could look yeah. back through it in your mind to, to back when Pony first was popping and then when you started to see a little bit of the decline of popularity, at least on the mainstream sort of a uh, sort of front, um, did you think that ponies would be at the place that they are now? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I certainly didn't think that like Fentures Magic would last like nine seasons. Um, that, that was uh, a lot um because at, at, at the time it, it felt like wait is, is this ever gonna end um <laughs> but um i i'm, I'm glad that it that it ended at, at a at a good place um and then we were getting a, a generation five so it, it seems like it's just gonna go on for for a long time um one thing that that is uh, kind of crazy about how i know jack's uh jack's blade and i have talked about it how there are some like kids that are like on TikTok listening to like, like Tombstone or whatever, mm -hmm. and like listening to, to Discord. And it's like, did you know this is a this is a my, uh, uh, a song from like a Brony community back in the day? And they're like, what? No way. <laughs> so I heard. It's... I heard about Discord making its rounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's so it, it's funny to see like um people that like weren't even like uh, around in the community or that were just like babies or whatever like. <laughs> Um, just, uh, uh, rediscover, like, some of the, like, fandom content, um, and uh, seeing that resurfacing. So, it, it, it's, it's very strange. It makes me feel old, too. <laughs> oh, gosh, don't go there. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, nostalgic, I'm sure, at least, uh, at least a little bit. I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I'm not too much about the, uh, that, um, that cringy, how did you get into the fandom sort of thing? It's very cliche. Uh, but was there mm -hmm. anything about the the show itself, any episode or something like that, that that really hooked you in initially when you first got into it? Um, hmm. I I don't know if there was like a specific uh, specific episode. Um, but I I did like watch all of season one in like one weekend. Um, because I I I I think a uh, part of it was the fact that I, I was like almost done with college and my um my local friend group was like drifting apart um and like doing their own thing so i i i, I was like uh just watching the show because like i had seen like youtube poops on on um on yeah. on youtube so i, I was looking at i was like this this looks interesting and cute, so I want I want to watch it because I I had also been like getting more into anime at the time, yeah. Uh, so I was just looking at cute things, um. So that that's just kind of how how I got into it was just, uh, just wa watching YouTube poops and then finding out oh this is a show, um. So, and then just watched the the whole season in a weekend. Okay, so you're talking about the YouTube poops. Was the anthology season started by the time you started getting into the show? I don't know. Um, I don't know if Anthology had come out uh, at that point. Because I got into the show in August of 2011. Um, That's about the same time I did. Yeah. Uh, because that, that was like right before Season 2 was about to start. Um, and I, I, think, I think it helped that I got into it around that time. Um, since, since Season 2... Uh, was about to start so i i was getting into the show so i could watch it like weekly then when it came out um 
but uh and then then i started do doing videos on it because i was also like trying to do youtube stuff at the time i was like since i i i kind of rebranded myself because i had a like a different online ad identity before and um uh, that's where it became paleo steno um and i i started doing uh video content about uh about ponies um where i was doing reviews of the episodes which not not a lot of people were doing it back then um so um yeah uh i think just the fact that it was like weekly and i i had something that i could do a video on every week uh just kind of got me into it i guess So not to go too far into left field here, but uh, do you got any strange uh, um, paleontology facts for us? Is that is that is that a good term? Paleontology facts? Um, yeah, paleontology. Um, strange or interesting? Uh, man, I don't know, cause um, there's there's a lot that I could um look up or whatever um because i'm i'm into pa paleontology that's that's what I, I wanted to be um uh originally uh growing up uh, i wanted to be a paleontologist uh like as a kid um but I, i'm just sort of a, a fan of paleontology i do follow a few like paleontologists on on twitter and stuff um but i, I guess one thing is like uh as far as like feathered feathered dinosaurs go because uh, like a lot of theropods which are you know bipedal uh small arms like raptors t-rex or whatever um but a lot a lot of those like had feathers or whatever but it's still it's still debated whether t-rex had any or not um at least uh, as a full-grown adult um it, it goes back and forth <laughs> a lot <laughs> uh but so there, there's there's still a lot of um like guesswork with paleontology where like we're trying to figure this out, but we we're trying to find just piece the evidence together. Um, but yeah, um, it's funny t today the um, uh, just today as we're recording this interview, uh, Prehistoric Kingdom came out, um, uh, which is a um, uh, a park building game uh, that's like you know Zoo Tycoon or Roller Coaster Tycoon okay. or whatever, but it's like b building your own uh, Jurassic Park basically, which there are a couple of. Uh, park builder games like that with the Jurassic world evolution but with um prehistoric kingdom they have some more scientifically accurate um designs in there and there are a couple in there that are sort of speculative as far as like certain um dinosaurs go like there's one of a uh, uh, pachy uh pachy rhinosaurus mm -hmm. um and um i think it was pachy rhinosaurus i think that's what it is um where it sort of has like these uh woolly feathers or whatever um it looks very interesting um though that that's the like i said that's more of a, like a speculative design um but yeah there's there's a lot of things i i could go off on about paleontology i just have to have to have like specifics to to talk about it and i'm also very excited for that prehistoric planet coming out uh yeah if that's out, if that's out by the time this interview is it looks gorgeous uh the uh animation on that is is just wonderful uh i think you had said that the the team who had done that uh, i don't know if you'd remind me again but the team who had done that was also involved with something else uh, a pretty big project yeah they did the uh they did the lion king, king remake right right okay yeah 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 it looks wonderful it really does um so to give you a more targeted question then um i know we had talked about this before but in the past, uh, I, I don't even know how long it's been, five or six years or so, there's been a super popular um, uh, dinosaur product, if you will, very historically accurate as well, I think you'd agree, uh, called Ark Survival Evolved. Um, if I remember mm -hmm. right, you haven't played that before. Yeah, I, I, I haven't played it. Like, uh, like I said, when our previous conversation, we were, um, uh, I, was, I was saying that I had bought it on Steam before uh, on my old computer, installed it, didn't work. So I was like, well, I'll get a refund then. <laughs> Um, so I, 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 I still haven't played it. There's another game I, I have that I do want to play, um, uh, cause it, it, it goes into my other, like, interest of, like, uh, marine biology and everything, and I, I want to play Subnautica at some point. Oh, okay. Um, that's funny. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Power Wash Simulator, but Subnautica I actually too. have been playing that. 
<laughs> you got a uh, you got Ark, you got Subnautica, and you're over here playing playing Power Wash. Power Wash. Why is everybody <laughs> playing Power Wash Simulator? It's relaxing. Like mm. that's the that's the actual reason that I I bought Power Wash Simulator because like I like I said uh, earlier, I'd been going through like some uh, emotional problems uh, recently. So just playing that is just kind of re relaxing while like listen to other stuff. Yeah. Goodness gracious. You're among many, many people who are playing that game right now, and it's. I'm I'm gonna have to give it a try at this point. I'm not quite sure. I'm not mm. quite sure what the deal is. Um, so you do uh, occasionally you're on. A, I think it's Ready Player Dumb. Um, oh yeah, yeah. With them, yeah, with Among Us and all of that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. We've mainly. I, I've mainly just been on the uh, the the Among Us things, but that sometimes I'm on other things that we that we do. Um. But yeah, it's it's fun like uh, doing like uh, every like Sunday night we record, uh, doing like an, a a round of Among Us or whatever, um, just having our our friends just kill each other. So good, that's good. I haven't seen any, uh, or I've I've seen I've seen part of one at this point. Do you guys are you, are you pretty good at figuring out who is who? Do you guys have a pretty good dynamic as to who uh and who does what? There's there's a lot of things that are just so. Man, it's it's hard sometimes because like the the last the last time I was so sure that it was Pamela and Matt, but then it was uh, DB Pony and Matt. Um, so it it there, there's a lot of surprises uh, surprises uh, when when playing Among Us, um, and then um, uh, Viva Viva does like uh, Viva Reverie does like forty chess sometimes, um. Same with Saber. Saber is very tricky. Okay. And then for, yeah, for those who don't know, they, they have a, uh, it is a weekly, I think just for that event, but it's, it's uh, pretty regularly that they, they put out content. Yeah. We, re uh, we record like life. multiple at a time. So. Oh, okay. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And that's ready player dumb. Check it out on YouTube. Um, let me see how we're doing on time here as well. Really quick. I don't want to take up all of your, okay, cool beans. That is what that said. Um, cool. Sounds about right. So you were a part of a, a races wrap up video for Bronies React, just just finalizing the end of Generation Four. Um, mm -hmm. How how did how did that feel to you? Uh, uh, seeing ponies come to a close. What were your final thoughts uh, as the series was was moving to to closure? Yeah. So. Uh, I, um, I, I know that, like, uh, Jax cried on the, uh, the reaction, and, uh, I, I was, like, tearing up a little bit, but, like, I, it didn't, uh, with, with the reaction, like, when I first watched the, the finale, uh, that's when I, like, I, like, actually cried, um, just, like, as soon as that book closed, mm -hmm. um, and, um, but, yeah, I, I think at that point, it real it, it made me realize, like, how much, uh, the show and I guess the franchise in general uh, meant to me, um, because like uh, just that how much of an impact it it it, it hit me emotionally, um, because uh, we, I think I I think I said in the reaction too, um, that like uh, w without the show I wouldn't have the friends that I have today, um, uh, like I I wouldn't have met Saber and that wouldn't have like uh made that domino effect and meeting every everybody else um so yeah i i do like uh really appreciate the show for that heck yeah if there were any things involving g4 whether it be the characters or, or continuation of any of the story uh moving forward um is there anything that you would like to see um uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. Like, I I would have liked for Equestria Girls okay. to get like an actual ending. Sure. Um. Because it it felt like the Friendship of Magic itself like got its ending, but like with with the uh, Equestria Girls, it didn't really get one. Um. So I yeah, I think that's the only thing. Okay. Have you by chance read Fall at Equestria? I have not. I, I I didn't really uh, read a lot of uh, fan fiction. Uh, like I don't really really read a lot of fan fiction in general. Uh, so sorry. <laughs> oh no, 
sad bronies all over the world right now. Um, I'll still ask the question anyway, because you might at least be familiar with the idea. Uh, towards the end of, it wasn't the last episode, um, when Cozy, Tyrick, and Chrysalis uh, stormed the castle, they had uh, separated a lot of the races from one another. Mm -hmm. And we found um, that they were kind of coming unto themselves and, and becoming reclusive. Uh, an example of this is when the uh, main six arrive in Ponyville, or the main five, I guess, arrive in Ponyville. Uh, they see a shot of the Pegasi closing up the sky, moving all of the clouds. Are mm. you familiar with that motif in, in Fallout Equestria at all? Nope. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, I figure at this point, with how long the book's been out, everybody kind of gets the gist of it. Uh, well, since nope. I went through <laughs> never everything. got into it. Since I went through, have you ever? I've never even games? played a Fallout game. What? <laughs> How have you never played Fallout? Like so I, I, I have a couple. I have a couple of Fallout games on on my Steam, but like I have, I have like a thousand Steam games. So like, is I have a gigantic backlog of games. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, I, I never got into um like any fan fiction really. Have you played any Elder Scrolls games? Nope. <laughs> What type of, what type of games do you play, Bailey? Um, simulator? Yeah. <laughs> no, I am I am I am a big Nintendo fan, so yeah. Okay. But I I've I've also getting I've been getting into more uh like Sony stuff as well because I, I I'm like one of the ten people who have a, t a PS5. <laughs> oh, you do have one of those, really? Yeah. I heard those are cool. Yep. I, I guess it's not fair to like say say like ten, but like I mean, because like it's selling out. But like I'm just saying, like it's rare to find people who have one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same with the new Xboxes. I have an Xbox built into my yeah, PC. I've... Why would I need an Xbox? Yeah, I I have an Xbox Series S, um, just because I I use it as like a Game Pass machine. And like the thing yeah. is, like all the Fallout's and Elder Scrolls are on there, so I can play them at any time. Don't start with me. You but can, I, 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 just got, I just you got, I just got, yeah, I, I just got finished uh, playing Horizon Zero Dawn. I really like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that that, that's on game. PlayStation. Yeah. So uh, I'm Team Isabel. I don't know about you. If you love your Nintendo, then I'm sure you probably uh, have a favorite. Favorite Nintendo character in general? In general, also, I'm assuming you probably play Smash, or you've heard of Smash. You probably heard of Smash. Is yeah. This Nintendo um, game. Uh, as far, as far as like favorite uh, Nintendo character, uh, Samus, because um, okay. I I'm Me Metroid is my favorite uh video game franchise. Heck yeah. Um. Uh, as far as Smash go, um, because for Smash I played Kirby for a while. Uh, then I switched over to Game and Watch. Um, and then uh I played Zero Suit Samus for a bit, and then I played Shulk. Um. I think those were the, like the main ones I played, as far as that goes. But yeah, um, there, there's a lot of Nintendo characters I, I like though. Um, but <laughs> I, I I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to um, continue the conversation without without knowing where I'm going. Fine. You don't. You don't have to know where to go. This is a. This is a journey. Okay. Uh, we have the lantern. That's all we need. We'll. We'll find our way. We have a sword. Um. Uh. I. I guess I stay on the topic since it's. It's at least topical for. Uh. For me and my group here. So do you. Are you interested in Breath of the Wild at all? Is that something that's fun to you? Yeah. I. I really like Breath of the Wild. Two's coming up here yeah. uh, next year, I believe. Mm. Yep. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah. Leading up to Breath of the Wild, I actually like played through all of the. Um, I had played through them through them before. Uh, some of them not to completion, but uh, I played through all of the like the mainline Zelda games. Yeah. Um. Uh. But it, it's funny because like leading up to Breath of the Wild, I was like, oh, Breath of the Wild is nothing like these other Zelda games. Um. But I I I really enjoyed Breath of the Wild. Uh, it had it, like an awesome like sense of discovery and everything. Uh, which I, I love that in games of, like, discovery and exploration. Yeah. 
It might be the wolf transformation, but Twilight Princess has always been like the special. Oh yeah, place in Twilight my Princess is great. Uh, but Breath of the Wild is probably the one I've spent the most time on. I know going back through in Master Mode, especially uh, in completing that, it was it was really nice to to set down the game and just have everything completely finished on it. And that's not something I, I often get to do in games. I, I don't find a game that's that interesting. So, yeah, Breath of the Wild was Breath of the Wild was uh, incredible, and uh, mm-hmm. I can't wait for for the second uh, second edition. Sorry, I'm still just blown away by the whole you've never played Fallout, Elder Scrolls games. Nope. Gosh, it just keeps coming back to me. In it, ways. It's it's probably because like I I didn't really I didn't really grow up with like like um Xbox too much, uh or or it, and there, there's certain like PC games uh that yeah. I I did grow up with, but it it wasn't like Elder Scrolls or or Fallout, um. But yeah, um, because I as far as like PC games and Xbox games, I did grow up with because I I think for a lot of people it was like oh yeah Halo. Um, because I I did um I didn't own an Xbox, but like my friends would bring theirs over and I play Halo with them. Yeah. Um, and as far as like PC games go, like I've I played through Half Life, um, like a TF2, uh, you know Portal and all that, uh, and Left 4 Dead. I I played Left 4 Dead a lot with um like uh, also on the Ready Player Dumb channel. We we've done a few uh, playthroughs of that. Oh. Um, okay. Like with it, like different uh different modded um. Uh, campaigns too because there's mm. this one where you can go through disneyland uh what uh that that one we play through a lot hmm. I, i'm gonna check that out after this that sounds really interesting i didn't even know yeah. that was a thing okay well to keep the, the subject on games here but uh of course you know uh, it being a pony interview i've gotta i've gotta ask have you played many different pony games um I I know there were a couple of that were being worked on. I know there was a one I think that I played the demo of. I'm not sure if it's like completed or not, um, or if it was ever completed. Uh, My Little Investigations, uh, which is like a sort of like a a Phoenix Wright point and click <laughs> kind of uh adventure game. Um, and then my my friend Hirosashi, he was working on um Legends of Equestria, which was like the MMO type thing. I work on that team. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, I have played a little bit of just, like, to hang out, um, uh, on Ponytown. Because I know Ponytown's been, like, working with conventions as well. to have, like, streams of yeah. of games. Uh, or streams of conventions in, right. in the game. Uh, which I thought that was funny when, um, when, uh, we were hosting Who's Line at HarmonyCon. Saber, Saber Spark was actually watching in Ponytown. Um, so, like, since I, since I knew that, I, I... Uh, we kind of made fun of him a little bit, saying like, uh, asking the audience, like, uh, who's excited the saber's not here, and they have the audience cheer. <laughs> oh goodness gracious! It's a cool little platform, though. I mean, and I, I've I've seen how they've been working with conventions too, and that's it's it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. The mm-hmm. giant screen, I think, is what they have it up on in their events room. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's also another um pony project, but though they kind of like uh shifted themselves away from like the French of the magic brand or whatever, but it still like uh, looks like pony. Um, uh, it's, I forgot the name of it, but it looks like paper Mario. Uh, um, I yeah. You're going to say fighting is magic, but no, no, I, I have, I have played them's fighting herds, but I am terrible at fighting games. Okay. So I, I don't really play many. Um, I, I know we just talked about smash, but like, I don't count that. <laughs> huh? It's, it's very, it's very different. From okay. normal fighting games. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of the uh, the Paper Mario game you're you're talking about, honestly, off the top of my head. Yeah, I I I, I don't remember because I I do follow the Twitter, but I I follow a lot of people, so I'm I'm trying to figure out like which one it was. Um, and while we have a little bit more time here, I also wanted to ask: uh, Did you, um, or with as little bias as possible? Who are your favorite uh, pony content creators, whether they be artists, musicians, YouTubers, uh, whatever the case may be? Anybody that you follow in the community that you like? Um, it's been a while since I've like, uh, like made a list of like some some of my favorites, uh, other than my friends. Um, because like my my friends are great. Like, um, I know that um, DB Pony is working on an album right now. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, and then 
uh, race and all of his his stuff that he that he does uh, with a uh, with with everyone. Um, trying because there's a there's a lot of artists that I I follow as well. Um, uh, one of one of my favorite artists is a uh, Riley uh, Riley Av. Um, uh, on on Twitter uh, and also uh, other places. She she does I, I think she does like some of the best like Equestria Girls art. Um, because she doesn't really draw like pony too much, but uh, she draws Equestria Girls like especially the Dazzlings. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she draws them really well. Um, and then uh, one of my favorite uh, musicians, um, I know General Mumble. I I liked a lot. Uh, back in the day, and I I need to listen to a lot more of his recent music, and then uh uh one I've I've been re-listening to um recently because um I I used to hope hope uh I used to host the um top ten uh, pony songs uh for every month uh back in the day like in 2013 2014 um and uh I I found out he's still like uh, making more music. Um, though he's he's busier nowadays, uh, is Fuzogs. Uh, Fuzogs oh. has some really excellent songs. Okay. Haven't heard that name in a while. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I did did because uh, uh, me and Saber, um, he did the um Fuzogs did the song the intro song for the Brony Chronicles when we did that, um, uh, oh. which which is make us make make it special. Um, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, I had just found out like the other day that he did a a new a new um a new rendition of that song uh mm. like a, a a year ago I think and okay. I was like oh I I didn't know he did this Heck yeah I'm going to I'll have to check that out um It's been a minute since I've watched the Bernie Chronicles too You guys need to do you yeah, guys same. Need to do a new one of <laughs> Just just make a new one it's all right we need more um and that's been one of the coolest things about doing these interviews is going back through and, and being able to touch base and, and see what all of the creators are up to. Uh, like Silva mm -hmm. Hound put out a pony album this last year. Um, there, there's so many new creators as well that I've, I've never seen before that are, are putting out content all the time. Um, is yeah. is oh. there anybody new you can think of? Oh, okay. I'm not sure if anybody new. I know there's like a lot of animators that I, I, am, I watch okay. um, that have been doing some content. Um, as far as like like pony stuff goes, uh, I know uh, Crooked Beetles uh does the like uh the TikToks, um of like the different like uh uh where they're like drawings of the pony. It's not like completely animated, but it's like uh drawings of the pony where it's like the camera on the on the drawing and it kind of moves a little bit, um uh, of like dubbed over different uh different scenes, um uh that that content's great, um. But a one one artist I was going to mention, and I was actually interviewed about this because me, Saber, Hirasashi, and uh, some others like talked to him on Skype back in the day. Was a so great and powerful, because um, yeah. disappeared off the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. um, nobody knows what happened. Um, and I've I've been contacted a lot about him because since yeah. we had talked to him uh, a lot, and I I was interviewed at a convention uh, recently back in. Uh, uh, Ponyverse at uh, Ponyville Ciderfest, I believe, last year. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, his his music is is uh is still great. Um, I know when I was re-listening to some of the the old uh top tens I used to do and and uh uh hearing some of his songs, I was like, oh yeah, this this music is still really good. It is, and I've I've noticed there's a lot of conversation about that. Uh, I I've noticed in the last year of people. Um very curious as to as to what's happened trying to find out what's going on um with s gap and and trying to uh to there's somewhat of like a a subculture surrounding that whole that whole thing right now yeah which is awesome to see um let me see here on time again uh i'm not sure how long you have so i'll go ahead and take a moment really quick to ask uh if you think you might have a decent amount of time, um, if you yeah, I, I have time. Up. Okay, cool beans. I might try to aim for another uh, twenty thirty minutes or so. Uh, about five o'clock, I have another interview. Five o'clock my time, four o'clock your time. 
Is that how time works? Uh, six o'clock. Six o'clock, right. Forward. My bad. So you can tell I haven't slept in a couple of days. Uh, so, uh, and, and everything flowing good for you so far? Everything seemed decent? Mm-hmm. Cool. Cool. Ah, oh, it's good. Elder Scrolls Fallout. Gosh. Uh, start a Patreon or something so we can pay you to play those games. Classics, man. Classics. You can play them on your phone for free. They're with your Game Pass subscription. All right. All right. Okay. Power Watch Simulator. No, that's cool. I don't even care. I don't even care. <laughs> So, Equestria Daily has been a part of the Pony fandom here for, I don't know, two or three years. Uh, we really love making Pony content. Yeah, a couple of years. A um, couple of years. Um, it, it, were you ever featured on Equestria Daily, to your knowledge? Um, I I know there are a few, like, my reviews, and, like, I know there's the, uh, I was in the Nyla Roundup a, a few times. Um, uh, and then, like, with the Brony Chronicles stuff, uh I mean, we're featured for that, and then I'm 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 in Bronny's rack, so uh, for that I I don't I don't know if like for recent things though that I've done, um, but yeah, back in the day uh, I did have a few videos and stuff on there. Um, I it's funny like looking looking back at back at Equestria Daily when it it first when I first found it found it back when I I when I joined the fandom in August of 2011. Um, you could actually like go back all the way and like see everything. Mm-hmm. Now it's like there's so much, and that was posted. Yeah, there there is a lot. Um, probably too much. Probably too much pony. I know searching through the search bar takes a good sixty three five hundred and thirty three posts. Sixty three thousand five hundred thirty three posts. So one or two, it's fine. Um. Do you remember uh, Equestria Daily um, uh, helping at all as far as, as getting any of those uh, those projects uh, off the ground? Uh, my first my first big video that I did back on my my old channel uh, where it was titled like uh, "Why My Little Pony Friendship's Magic is So Good and Why You Should Give It a Chance." I think I think that that's the title of it. Um, yeah. yeah, that that's that 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 helped that um, uh, that video take off a little bit. Um, and that's that's how I I met Saber because I I had I had searched for like um, videos that were similar to it to what I was working on, um, and I saw that uh, Saber had Battle of the Brony, uh, but I didn't watch it yet because I wanted to do my own video first and then watch his. Um, and then like message message Saber about it, and then uh, we talked and became like instant best friends. Um, but. Yeah, it it did did help help a uh, a bit with uh, certain videos. Um, yeah, even if it was just if it was just in the uh, the Nyla roundup. Thank you. I'm not sure how much it would hurt now. Uh, hurt how much it would help nowadays. Uh, because yeah. of like how. Well, no, it's it's nothing against like a <laughs> question daily, but like, it's just the fact that like. The internet is very compartmentalized now. Mm, yeah. So like people don't really go to blogs much anymore no. though i know with yeah i know with um with fandoms like it, it can help to have like a, a hub of of sorts which equestria daily has always been a, kind of been that hub hey the hub i see <laughs> yeah oh god miss those guys to death we were just talking <laughs> about that the other day sad to see them go no no other yeah. no other group had worked with us like the hub had um just a, a fun little tidbit because I don't think I've mentioned this to, to Race or Saber or anybody Bronies React related since they've been on. Um, Seth has, or whoever for that matter, whoever has posted an, a Bronies React post on EQD, we have these things on Blogger called uh, labels, which are like tags. Um, mm. and, and Bronies React has been uploaded consistently since the beginning on Equestria Daily as analysis videos. And I, I, I caught that uh, me, me, and convers- uh, me and Seth had a conversation about it. I'm like, I don't think they're analysis. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that's still the case. If it is as of when this video comes out and people go and see that, I apologize. We understand that they're not analysis videos. Um, I, I've always looked at them as kind of like just entertainment, like comedy videos. 
I don't know if you'd agree yeah. with that, if you'd have a better term for it. Yeah, they're they're pretty much like comedy videos. There's 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 some people that take like some of the jokes like too seriously, um, where they, they'll 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 get offended by what we say about like the characters or whatever, and it's like, sure. well, we're trying to make a joke. Yeah, like, like it's, it's not Twilight's serious. My OC. She's supposed to marry my OC. I mean, people took that serious. I took that seriously. Um, do you have anything, like, from the show, from w- w- any sort of pony content that you guys have not done a Bronies react on that you think you should, or that you would like to have? Um, I know that I know that race, because uh, we did one recently of um, the first uh, premiere right. from season season one. Um, and I know he wants to do one for the finale as well at some point uh, of season one. At the gal. And yeah, and uh, and I think the I don't yeah we never did a uh, one for the premiere of season two because um, that was before Bronies Rack was a thing. Um, uh, there there might be some things because I I know that um, Tell Your Tale is kind of weird uh, as far as like how we might react to that or not. Um, cause like it, it's going, coming out so closely to make your mark. Yeah. Um, uh, so that makes it difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as like other pony content, I know it'd be interesting to see, um, uh, maybe a few of us do something for the game. I think that'd be fun. Hmm. Okay. And you're talking about the game locked game, right? The one yeah. on the phone where you toss the ball <laughs> and you... Buck apple trees. No? I mean, that, that new game looks cool. But, but funny story about that is, like, I actually had a, um, a Samsung Galaxy that was not a phone. It was just a Galaxy. Um, it was, like, what a... Uh, yeah, it was just, like, a Galaxy Media Player or whatever. Um, and I downloaded the Game Loft game. Uh, I found out how to uh, basically get unlimited, like, diamonds in the game or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like by by like unlocking the game somehow. Yeah. Uh, so I just played it like that. <laughs> I'm right there with you, actually. That's funny. Yeah, they've been updating that game pretty regularly. I don't know if they've added any uh, G5 content. Wait, it, to it that, still exists. But it still exists, and they and I looked it up like <laughs> a, a year ago, and they had like up to date, like through the end of the show, everything is. There's a lot of content on there. They they've continued to update it. So yeah. props to them. I'm pretty sure if you grind for that stuff in real time to, to actually go from beginning to, to having a decent amount of stuff, it would probably take 40, 50 years. I'm not sure if anybody's gotten there legit. Um, but, I mean, hey, few ponies. You get to play play uh, play catch with Twilight or whatever that you want to call that. So that's, that's pretty yeah. fancy. So I, I can't simulate that experience myself in any other way. So you got to take what you can get. Um, a lot of ums. We're, we're very um around here. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, th- there was a G5 question I had missed that I've been asking. I'd like to oh. go back to it, even though it's a little bit of a... We're going to jump back all the way to that, if that's all right with you. Yes, yeah, fine. Um, and, and this actually kind of ties into the game, though. So, uh, so Sunny is a really interesting character, um, if you will. Uh, and the ending of the of the movie shows her with her fancy little flappy wings and her fancy little or stabby horn, um, and, mm-hmm. and it's very clear that they're magical. Uh, however, in the game, I don't know if you've you've seen much of, of what's been released of that, but she has those same powers still. They still seem to be accessible to her. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about that idea? About the idea that maybe Sunny now has some inherent like. Maybe maybe she's not an alicorn per se, but she has these alicorn abilities. Because it seems to be that, at least if the game is any indication, that that seems to be certainly the case. Yeah, it it, it definitely seems like it. I think we'll find out more when yeah. the special comes out in May. Because um, she does still have like that, that rainbow streak uh, in her hair. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think it's just like something she can turn off and on whenever she wants. So Horn lightsaber? Is that canon? Yeah. All right, all right. I wasn't sure. Some people have 30-minute theories on that, and I, I, just, I wasn't sure how you felt about it. Um. All right. Am I looking on time? Probably got another 10 minutes here. 
There's going to be quite a few cuts in this. I apologize. We're going to have to stencil this right. together. We brought on a, a, an editor who knows what they're doing this time around, so hopefully they can help make things look a little neat. Um, I know nothing about that. If I did it myself, uh, we'd be looking at a train wreck here for sure. Um, oh, yeah. That's a good one. So... A lot of bronies spend uh, probably an unreasonable amount of money, some might say, on pony merchandise. Uh, do you fit that category at all? Do you have a whole lot of pony mer merch? I, I don't really have too much, like, official merch. Um, I, I, I never really had much of an interest in that. Like, I bought, like, a couple of toys back in the day when I, like, first got into the, the, the fandom. But I was like, eh, I'm not, like, too into getting this stuff. I, I mainly... Uh, at cons, if I see something I like from from like artists and everything, I, I might get something. Uh, like I did get a couple of um those Equestria Girls uh plushies. Those those are actually the first plushies I've ever like bought at a convention before. Um, and that was like at, just at Harmony Con this year. Um, uh, that that Twilight was given to me. Um, but uh, I've I've more recently have been just like commissioning like arts. Uh. And I'm getting some like uh, getting a few like your character here uh, posts uh, uh, of my of my pony OC. Um, I've been getting a lot of that recently, so it's only kind of recently where I've been like getting some of that stuff. Um, and then like shirts, like like I got this shirt at um uh, the last Brony Con. Uh, oh, Saber made you I, get I a sunset to, uh, shirt. What? Saber made you get a sunset shirt. It looks like. Oh no, I got this on my own. Oh. Sure, sounds good. Uh, do you do you remember any of the artists that you've you've been commissioning recently? Can you talk about that at all? Oh yeah, I have like some in my my Twitter DMs here. Um, there's one that I I have recently. Um, Cypherwave. Uh, Cypherwave does some like amazing like. Uh, it, it's just uh, uh, kind of what it sounds like. It was like kind of like synthwave like looking art. Um. And I got some of my pony, uh, where there's, it's, um, like coming out of a, of, out of a Game Boy, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I have a link of it here. Uh, but that, that artist does some, uh, really excellent work. And then, li like I said, I, I've been commissioning, uh, Riley AV, um, for like a Quester Girl stuff. Right. Um, But then, then, like I like I said, there's a lot of your character here ones that I that, that I've gotten, uh, like this uh, one from Cyberwave. Of course. I thought you said Cyberwave. I typed it into Twitter, and the first thing that came up was a big NFT channel, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> we're gonna have a conversation about NFTs, aren't we? Dodged a bullet on that one, I'd say. Uh, by the way, uh, after this call, I do actually want to. Uh, I, I think I have a way I can make you some money. Uh, I'm I'm teaching people about NFTs, and I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love it if you give me the opportunity to speak with you about that. Good, good, good. Uh, that that's awesome, though. Uh, the community, especially, there's there's a lot of conversations uh, recently, even about uh, the community getting to a point where we're not really able to support creators um, as much as we used to be, which might be the case mm -hmm. for some. But uh, there's definitely still a lot of people that I know. Um, that I, I, I witness on, on a regular basis who continue to make Pony um, either supplementary or, or full-time uh, income uh, for everything that they do. So it's awesome to see. It's awesome that you're help, helping contribute to that. Everybody needs at least a couple hundred thousand dollars of Pony merchandise. Whether it be official or not, fan-made is always the best, but um, I, I, I would say any is good. Hasbro is going to make more content if we spend more money, so... There's also that, so yeah. it's a good balance. Uh, let us see here. Um, so I'm about exhausted on questions at this point. Uh, I'm not sure if you have anything you would like to talk about, anything that I missed. I, I know we had maybe jumped around just a little bit there, uh, so I'm not sure if there's there's anything else you'd like to, to, to say. Before I transition, I'll give you a plug at the end here if you'd like to um throw anything in about your content but okay um i don't think there's anything else uh that i can think of 
that we might have missed. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, 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 social security number, latitude, longitude, coordinates, <laughs> um, password to your email. Some of these things are really important, and I, I feel like we need to go oh, over those. Oh, really um, I forget. That reminds me. Uh, <laughs> oh. I've been trying to log. Yeah, it does remind me. I've been trying to log back into my um, the Brony Breakdown YouTube channel because uh, okay. that is that's the po that's the podcast that uh, Saber and I used to do yeah. uh, uh, back in the day, um, and then Tom came in mm -hmm. uh, a, a little little later because um, somebody contacted me recently about like trying to get the older episodes out because they're they're unlisted and like YouTube did this thing uh, a few months back where they're like, oh yeah, all unlisted videos before 2017 are now private. Um, mm. so you can't see them. Um, and, uh, uh, they, they asked me, they could see it, like, on the Wayback Machine, um, uh, that there are some episodes there that, uh, aren't there anymore. Um, and I was wondering, like, are they unlisted or are they just privated or whatever? And I'm trying to get back into the, the account. Mm. I've talked to Tom and Saber and we're, we're trying to figure out how to get back into the account. Because we have no idea that what the password was or, like, who, who had the recovery email. So, we're tr we're trying to get like those old Brony Breakdown episodes to um, like, <laughs> be public again, because uh, th uh, this guy that um, that emailed me say he's making like a Brony Breakdown archive of like all the stuff we did with uh, Everfree Network and and stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I've I've been trying trying to work on that. Um. I'll I'll see if I can try to get back into the account somehow. Heck yeah. Okay. If we have any hackers out there, uh, your, your skills are required. We'd love to have <laughs> you on board. Help us help us get this figured out. Um, I'm sure worst case scenario, you just have to deal with Google and getting that reset. Uh, good luck. Have fun with that. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that's going to be a great experience. Yeah, I've, I've tried because like, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what the recovery email was. And they're say, saying like, try, try another way. Try figuring out a, a password that you think it was. It's like, sorry, you've tried too many times. Try again later. <laughs> yeah. Well, best of luck to you on that one. I, I know I would love to see him. I, I had forgotten about that channel until you just mentioned it. So that would be, that'd be, mm -hmm. I would love to see that myself. Um, I, I did realize I had missed a, a question I'm actually contractually obligated to ask. Um, so I might get that out of the way. Uh, who's your favorite bat pony and why? Favorite bat pony. Bat pony specifically. You have to know names. Their names. Oh, they have <laughs> names. What fandom are you in? Of course, they all have names. Every, every single character that's ever like, been. What? Like in the show? Oh, they could be fan characters. Oh. We're not going to judge. Oh, okay. They're fan characters, like. <laughs> I, I'm not sure of the name. I know there's some really good art of it, though. Echo is probably the most popular. The 4chan bat. Mm -hmm. The gray one with the purple hair. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of some other ones. You I could, have no idea what the names are, though. You could say Sweet Velvet, probably not knowing what, what it is, and uh, Seth will slide you a hundo under the door, I'm sure. We have an agenda we're trying to push. Yeah. And, uh, Can I just say Fluttershy, since she technically was a bat? You know, you totally can, and I'm Team Fluttershy, okay. so... Okay, so I'll say Fluttershy then. Good, good. How about Kieran? Bats and Kieran, oh, Kieran? That's, our, that's our gig. Oh. They also have names. Yeah. The only <laughs> name I know is Autumn Blaze, so I'll say that. <laughs> Poor Kieran's. Were you not... Were you, did you like the uh, the Kieran as a race? I, I, I did, I did. I, I liked that episode, too. Yeah, He's, Pretty cool episode. That's a great question. Actually, if I could, I could ask ask you this one as well. We're just gonna fill it up with just a couple of, of fun questions. What's your favorite non pony race? Favorite non pony race? Yeah. Um. I. Oh, uh, hippogriffs. I I really like the hippogriffs. Um. Yeah. I I think it's just the fact that they they can like turn into sea ponies or whatever. Um. So yeah, I, I I do like the hippogriffs. Yeah, hippogriffs are awesome. Have Have you read any of the comics? I haven't read. I've read like a a few of the comics, like in the beginning when they were first coming out, mm -hmm. uh, like the first couple of arcs or whatever, and like with Nightmare Parody and all that. Um. 
but I, I haven't kept up with it since then. It's funny because, like, the um, Humble Bundle recently had, like, a, a bit, I think it was, like, a couple of years ago, recently had a, a bundle where it had, like, all of the Pony comics that had ever been released at that time. It doesn't have some, some more of the recent stuff that has, has happened. Uh, like, it doesn't have, like, the Season 10 comics or whatever. Um, but uh, I do eventually want to read through all of them. They're cool. They're really, really good. There's some really fun stories in there, too. Um, there's one that uh, talks a lot about the other races as well. That, that's I think there's a lot of uh, lore that's built, and it's uh, going through and, and rereading them again just this last year reminded me how much of a... Uh, if you if you love Pony and you love the lore uh, behind the universe and, and you're willing to take that to heart, then the comics are a great way to yeah. to explore that a little bit. Um. Because, yeah, I, I started reading a lot of uh, the Adventure Time comics. Because, uh, like, after Adventure Time ended, I, I wanted to do do more, more of that stuff. Because um, uh, Adventure Time is probably my, my second favorite, um, like, cartoon of the 2010s, uh, next to Ponies. Um, so I, I read a bunch of those, but I, I also still haven't finished all of those comics. Um, but, yeah, I, I need to, to read more of the, the Pony comics recommend them so being a, a big adventure time fan then i'm sure you were blown away when uh, uh john dimaggio uh played trixie as uh um or it might not have been trixie but he played one of the characters uh in the live reading uh as jake yeah yeah um yeah that was that was that was interesting that was an interesting convention <laughs> yeah god that's that's been a second um, too hasn't it yeah the candlelight gardens 2012 um hmm yeah, it was it was a very interesting convention. That was also the convention that that so great powerful was at, because um, uh, he was running with us. Uh, it, a lot of weird things happened at that convention. Like me and Saber met Andrew W K, uh, mm -hmm. a giant man. Um, <laughs> it was it was it was it was weird. One of my most memorable conven memorable conventions to date. That was a fun one. Twilight and her cosplay, or mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, but okay, um, before we wrap up here and, and head out, uh, I would love to give you an opportunity if there's anything you'd like to plug or talk about uh, as far as content you or your your fellows be working on. Uh, we'd love to hear about it. All right, so um, uh, like I said, I I've been going through a lot of like different uh, emotional things the past few months, so I haven't really putting been putting out much. But um, I I do want to. Uh, there's there is some pony content I, I'm going to be doing and like a much bigger project about Friends of Magic I I want to try to get out this year, um, but uh, of course I'll be talking about the G5 stuff on my channel uh, Paleo Steno, um, and then a, uh, just other cartoon content, um, and then a POS podcast I host like every other Monday on the POS podcast channel, which I, I host with um, with Saber Spark Tommy Oliver. Uh, Jack's Blade and Hirosashi. Um, and uh, more recently, Jordan Fringe sometimes comes in as well, if you know who that is. Um, and then uh, I, I've been working on a few things for uh, Sarah Spark's um, gaming channel called Saber Spark 64. Um, so be sure to check that out. Me, me, him, and Tom are going to be doing uh, a gaming podcast podcast on that channel at, at some point. We're, we're trying to uh, get things uh, sorted with that because it's going to be an in-person like podcast that we're doing oh, okay. uh, where we're all together in the same room. Uh, we're, we're trying to make it look good. So uh, that, that'll be fun. But yeah, Sarah Spark 64, um, uh, that, that channel's uh, growing a lot. I know um, I'm not sure it, it, the video will probably be out, but I, I've been working on notes for a uh, Congress bad fur day video that Saber is going to be going over. Um, so uh, yeah, um, but yeah, in POS podcast, like I said, that's every other Monday. Um, I know we're going to be doing one right before Mobocon, I believe. And then, yeah, and also Mobocon, uh, all of us are going to be there at Mobocon. Uh, so if you're going there, uh, be sure to see us. And like I said, uh, Winnie City and Ciderfest will mm -hmm. probably be going to as well. Heck yeah. Maybe even Everfree if we're lucky. Yeah, I know that, um... Uh, Saber and Race will definitely be going. I'm not sure if I will be, um, but uh, I know that Saber and Race will definitely be going. Heck yeah. That would be awesome. 
Uh, well, I, I want to thank you, Paleo, for sitting down and speaking with me today. And on behalf of Equestria Daily, we're honored to have you on here. Um, we're sorry to hear about the uh, uh, back and forth here emotionally um, that you've been uh, emotional issues you've been dealing with. Uh, we really hope that continues to pick up for you. Um, we're excited for what's to come. I know I speak on behalf of everybody that uh, watches our content that we're, we're really excited to hear that you have pony stuff in the works and we can't wait to see it when it finally does drop. Cool. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, unless you have any final words. Um, yeah, this is this is all she wrote. Huh? Final words? Uh, famous last words. Famous last words. <laughs> We're getting canceled um, after this. Rainbow Dash's worst pony. Good. Okay. That's going to be the thumbnail, just so you know. You just did that. Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally. Heck no, yeah. wait. Uh, Sai Twi and Sunset are best ship. There you go. Okay. I mean, still not undoing the... I mean, that's new famous famous last word, sure, but that thumbnail is still, still the same. That's not changing. That's locked in. Okay. Well, thank you very also, much for Izzy, joining Also, Izzy and Sunny are also the new new best ship for they G5. They are. Izzy, yeah. Team Izzy all the way, Sunny and Izzy, even the even I mean everybody, everybody direct or everybody ships those two, OTP, yeah, for life. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Check back in next week. We're going to be having another special guest, and as always, have a great time. I'm just going to stare awkwardly at the camera for ten seconds here. Okay. No reason. That's not a part of it or anything. I'm not wearing a watch. <laughs>